made observations about the crabs that we just recently put into their habitat. Let's pick a couple of them and see what we think is important. Jose just said shell and the body. The legs and feet. The legs and feet. What would I be doing if I was like this? Being shy. Being shy. Grandpa. And what in particular are we looking at with the crabs? They move more than the frogs did. They move more than the frogs did. But frogs and crabs look so different, don't they? There's a lot of similarities between teaching about the frogs and the, and the crabs. There are some differences, obviously, in the habitats. So that can create an opportunity for the kids to discuss. But they seem to have what? Characteristics. characteristics, right? Some of the same characteristics because they are both, what are they both? Living or non living? Living. Living things, living organisms. The children love discovery and much better than opening up in a textbook and reading from it. you help me with that? Yeah, the girl. We're gonna, put, we're gonna put one in each. Make sure the top's on real tight. Mel, use your observing glasses too, okay? Um, if you observe your crab eating, then you're gonna write down, not why it eats, not the purpose of eating, but what I want you to write down is what you, if you actually observe them eating, how they're eating, what it looks like. I've noticed them really paying attention to um, the needs of the, the, the animals, such as their feeding habits. I said they must like wet food because yesterday we put lots of food on the ground, then we put lots of food in the water, and all the food in the water is gone now. How many crabs do you have? Two. 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 And how do you know the difference? Because the boy has a big claw. I think that the boy gets, eats bigger food, that's why he has bigger claws. I feel like antennas. They look like antennas? And there was a student that specifically noted that um, details was one of the most important parts of the scientific drawing. It has like two parts, like there's a line down the middle. We had already started a chart in the beginning, a question, what would we like to know about our crabs? And you all put some um, questions on a sticky note. One question that was asked was, why is one claw big and one claw small? Helps them grab onto the edge and pull themselves up. Okay. They get one side out of the water first and then they pull the other side up. But I really enjoy the responses that the children had, especially towards the end of the lesson. I want to go ahead and give you your homework assignment for tonight. Take home activities, especially the one that they're going to do tonight. It gives them an opportunity for reflection. It is time to observe the habitat of an animal you know very well. You. We're actually going to be talking about humans. Okay? Um, we've been talking about the, um, the African dwarf frogs and the fiddler crabs. What is something it needs to survive? Rankwam. Shelter. The students have become so much more aware of the needs of of the animals and the habitats as the unit has progressed. Water. Not only water is salt water. In particular. Other students from other classrooms want to know what's going on in my classroom. For some of these children, this is the only opportunity that they will ever have to actually have a pet opportunity to deal with an animal that comes from another part of the world. Um, some of these children have never been to the beach, and that's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity.